Hello, good afternoon, good morning. It's the weekend of October the 28th. <laughs> I like to say happy birthday to my brother in law, Victor Wells. And y'all, excuse me, this is my morning outfit. I totally just in my PJs. <laughs> I'm in my PJs, no makeup. It is what it is. I've got I'm making a roast today and some vegetables. So I'm gonna be cutting up some vegetables while I talk. So y'all got me. I'm in my kitchen and I just want to just come forth and I was inspired by a video. First of all, I'm Queen F of Queen F Speaks Arise TV. Thank you for joining me today. And yeah, I was inspired. Usually I am inspired by YouTube uh, content creators. I mean, I rarely watch movies. I do from time to time, but for the most part, I love fresh content. So I love YouTube content creators that come forth with a word that is new, a word that is really just, you know, it, they, they keep it real. We'll just say that. Now, as you can see from the banner and from the thumbnail, we're going to talk about a subject that a lot of people probably don't want to talk about, but it's real. It is truly real. Um, this YouTube, I'm going to just YouTuber, his name, I don't know his name. Uh, his YouTube channel is called Our Ever, let's see, Our Everyday Lives. He's very good. I watch him from time to time. And this is the young man right here. His subject today is about which women that captured my attention, uh, which women versus the divine fem feminine. So he's on YouTube, our everyday lives. So I'm bouncing off of him. Um, this is what my subject is going to be about. A good witch? Are you a good witch or bad witch? Like in uh, the the Wizard of Oz, you know they, the I think someone asked that question, and it's really a serious topic when you are a spiritual person, when you are um, a child of God, when you are chosen, and for the people that are on that other side, for the dark images and the dark uh, arts that they're involved in. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it because it is so important that we know and that we have the spirit of discernment. You've got to you know that you know what you're dealing with. We're in a time where you can't walk around uneducated, uninformed without the spirit of discernment because that has messed up a lot of our lives. And we know that as young people, we start coming into our own, falling in love. You know, we have the high school sweetheart, sweet 16. You know, we fall head, head, head over heels with uh, our loved one, the, the young man or the young woman that we, you know, uh, really just found attraction to. But as we get older, we learn that uh, we put away childish things. We start picking up affirmations and holding them to our hearts and knowing that like Maya Angelou so so said people are trying to show you who they are believe them so we must start believing people when they tell us or show us who they are now what i'm going to do right now is i'm a, i'm i'm cutting up some squash. <laughs> I'm making a roast and vegetables. So I got my little vegetables. So we're going to talk about, we're going to talk while we peel. Is that okay? We're going to talk and peel, but it's a real important subject to thine own self be true. First of all, you've got to know that you know what you're dealing with out here in the world. Um, like I said, as a young girl, I know personally for myself, sweet 16 and older, I, I had a, you know, I had a young man who was very nice in my life, but there was also obsession that was there. Uh, there was some, you know, learning to love myself while at the same time loving someone as a young girl and realizing that things were not adding up. So I know what it's like to be in love and to 
make bad decisions, to be in love with being in love and not really loving yourself. Looking for love in all the wrong places. We all know the cliches. We know them all. Okay. Now, I'm going to just say that we've got to know the good from the bad. Now, this young man was talking about uh, the divine fem feminine versus um, the uh, witch women. There's a difference. There is a difference. And we do have loved ones. We have friends, families that may be even involved in the dark arts. Let's just keep it real. Uh, it's kind of like, I guess, a trendy thing now. Back in the day, now, we ain't going to blame everything on the young people. Back in the day, we had the root people, the people who came from different parts of the world that knew how to delve into the black arts. And the more I'm discovering and studying the Bible and the lost books of the Bible, I'm learning that uh, some of these arts were taught to uh, the God's chosen. And some people took it and did it and used evil. You know, I don't know. We can, I'm not going to list any names, but Queen Elizabeth, they, there was a story, there was a documentary where they said that um, she actually learned about the different um, things in Africa that were of uh, uh, supernatural, you know, and that she went to uh, this tree in Africa and they did some kind of thing and lo and behold she stayed in power until she was in her 90s so we cannot act new and act ignorant like the supernatural does not exist because it does exist but we must also know that the word of God uh, says and empowers us with everything that we need every ability all the things that Jesus did the healing of the sick, casting out demons. He left those gifts to us as the chosen. He told the disciples, greater is he in you than he that is in the world. Greater shall you do these things when I leave. Jesus knew he was going to ascend up to heaven, and he knew that he had to equip the disciples with everything that he knew as well. Because how else can we fight the devil, the enemy, the lower power, the, the dark uh, lost angels? How can we fight them if we don't have that same power? So just to keep you guys abreast, I'll just say I'm a divine feminine. I mean, at one time I was a little lost and went through a lot. And make sure you guys eat pickles to get rid of some of all that food that you eat. <laughs> Um, so excuse me, but don't think that what you see that, see, God had told me that people, they don't see what he sees. For instance, when people look at you, sometimes they see this little meek, quiet, maybe pushover, maybe a person that you can get over or a person that you can tell one thing and, and mean something else and they don't know it. But God knows us. And he would tell me, he said, people, as far as I'm concerned, people don't see what he sees. They don't see, for instance, the, the fruits of the spirit or the power that God bestowed, bestowed upon you. They don't see that you also have those same powers. We don't call it supernatural. We call it spiritual gifts, and we call it power from up on high, from what God gave us. It's super, it's natural, but it's the power that God gave us. And we use it for good and not for evil. And this is where the difference between the divine feminine and the witches, the dark energy. Now, some people think this is a game. They think this is a subject that they really probably don't want to hear about. But a lot of the things that are going on in the world that you see is because of dark energy. It's because people use their power for bad and not for good. It's because that even though people think it's cute and wear the, the women to wear the dark makeup, you know, and I wear makeup too, but we can over -adu, overdo it. You know, because they wear all black, because they walk around and they um, either hate someone so they throw their think they'll cast a spell on them. They think that that's okay. People really think that's okay. It's 
It's not. Because everything you speak into the universe, it comes back to you. In fact, it has to have an address. Every energy, every word, every idle word you will account to. And this is what God says in his word. But if you speak bad into the universe, like I say, it has to have an address. And if it goes to that address and that address and house is clean, it's going to go back out searching for another location. If it can't, it's coming back to you. So we have to be as divine feminine, chosen people, women of God. We have to know that we have to send out positive energy. Um, if we throw out a negative energy or a spell to someone, it's, it's going out there and it's coming back. We have been, have to be disciplined with the calling that we have. We can't do everything that we want to do because it's trendy and it's a new thing and we're hurting. We all have been hurting. We all have been hurt as young people, possibly. You know, you can raise your kids the best way you can. When they get older, they'll still find something, possibly, that you didn't do right. <laughs> and they may be right, too. They may be exactly right. For instance, I feel like I could have spent more time with my sons in sports and taking them to different learning, different sports. Sure, they, you know, was one was wrestling a little, the other one played a little football in high school, but, you know, one had an injury, so he couldn't play sports anymore. Um, but I felt like I could have did more. So they wouldn't be wrong in saying, you know, my mom could have did this better, you know, sure, she excelled in the business world or whatever, in the arts but she didn't excel as a parent. But they still love us. Some of our kids still love us, and that's fine. It's okay because they don't come with instructions. I wasn't, you know, even my mom, nobody gave her instructions on how to raise a family. So a lot of times we're doing the best that we can. But as we get older and we learn about the, the bad people in the world, the people that are uh, the reason why the world is in the chaos that it is, with wars, rumors of wars and jealousy and, 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 and the, the people of the world, the leaders arguing over space that God, that belongs to God. I don't know, really, if somebody could tell me why they're fighting in between Israel and um, the Gaza, whatever, the Palestinians, please tell me because I kind of lost track of why they're doing, why, why they're in war. Other than I know there was a concert that... Um, the Jews, Israelites were at or whatever, young people, and someone, you know, did something in that concert and some people expired. But if we look at the world, we can see that the energy is not good. You know, they're going into schools. People are shooting up kids, babies. It doesn't matter. We find families that uh, four people in one family been taken out by a teenager last week for why we don't know. He killed his mother, father, and his two younger brothers and sisters. He's 15, 16, and we're talking about like five and 10 years old. Why? There is a spirit that has to be, it's going to be subdued. But it is in the world now. So when you say you a bad witch, there's a lot that comes with that consultation. I had to correct a, a person um, that I thought was close to me when they kept posting that. And like I say, it's a trendy thing. It's kind of the new thing now, you know, and some young people don't know, though, what they're getting into. Because you're in a world of where you're tying yourself into a portal of no return. You got to have to eat all the words that you put out in the universe, all the words that you post, all the links and groups in, that you join that are into the dark arts, the dark world, because at the end of that tunnel is darkness, whether you want to believe it or not. You know, and then we got family members that are against family members because of whatever, you know, the gender, the lifestyle they've chosen. You can't, you know, really tell people how to live their life, but you have to to, to yourself, thine self be true. Now, when this young man did this video, I was like, he's right. He's right. There's this thing uh, called the Jezebel spirit. And we as women and men need to be aware that spirit is not very nice. It sounds cute. The name sounds really ringy and cute, but it's not. It's a spirit of control. 
it's a spirit of backlash. It's a spirit of want to be everywhere and everything to everybody uh, in control. And control is a, um, it's a demonic force also. There are different spirits and demons that have actually have names. Um, depression has a name. Anxiety has a name. Um, control. That's a Jezebel spirit. That's the name of that. And uh, that's a spirit that can tear down an entire family or an entire nation. And so it's real important that we know the good and evil that is existing, that is in our family. We've got to uh, get rid of these generational curses. We got family members who possibly ancestors who had delved into dark arts, delved into witchcraft, delved into casting spells and all of that. I even had uh, someone that I just recently met who was telling me about a spell that she put on her husband. And then she took, she went back and changed it. She changed her mind, <laughs> but she had to go dig up something that she had buried. And I was listening to this and I was like, no, you didn't. What the hell? <laughs> If I had to put a spell on someone for them to fall in love with me, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> this shit, it may backfire. It may go to another family member, you know. In the Bible, God, you know, God chose people that he would, um, you know, that he would get rid of. He said to the third and fourth generation because of the evil that you have done. And that was just God. That's Elohim. People want to think God is this pushover puppet that's sitting back with his hands crossed like this saying, what may I help you with? What is it that you need, my dear child? No, God is God is everything that we are. He can get angry. We, we can see that in the elements and the, and the tsunamis and the, the fires. God is not playing. They say he's sitting there, one of them, Jesus or Elohim. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I'm still learning about who is, you know, in the Bible when I read things, sometimes it goes away. And forgiveness, there's a, a demon of that too, that comes evokes into people, the, the spirit of uh, forgiveness. We should remember scriptures that we read, even if we have to write them down or look at our phone and put it in the, put it in the notes, you know, and I'm guilty of that. But yeah, one of them is sitting there with the coals in his hand. He like, okay, this is what this is what these people think. They think they're gonna get away with doing evil. You know, I they told you we could read in the Bible where he flooded the entire world and saved only a handful of people in Noah's ark. He told Noah to build the ark, and he did it. He flooded that sucker, Sodom and Gomorrah. He burnt them up. And who was that lost wife wanted to look back to see how it looked while they was trying to escape. She turned into a pillar of salt, uh, leprosy, frozen right in her tracks. And they say there are people that are actually frozen. There's a lot of evilness that's going on in the world that we have no idea. Pe they're making people. They People are eating people. They say they eat babies and things like that for rituals. It's a lot of evilness. So you want to delve into the black arts? Baby, eat the whole pack. Because you know what? It, it, it ain't no joke. It's nothing to play with. It may be high, high, he, he, and cute. And to dress up and you're all black and your pretty black uh, mascara and your big black clown shoes. <laughs> and I'm not judging nobody because I wore bell bottoms and things like that and, and high heels when I was in high school trying to be grown. I'm not judging, but we do have to have a spirit of discernment. God says we have to. He's giving us as a chosen. We've got to sit back and, and look and see, okay, who's the weed and who's the tear? Who's the witch and who's the divine uh, feminine? Who's the warlock and who's the, the, uh, the good man of God? Who is delivering the word of God? Who is praying and praying for his family? Who is, you know, being a good steward over God's house and not using the people of God, not using the motherboard and the the, the women in the kitchen and, and using them up and not, if they need a bill paid or electric bill is behind, so, oh, with such and such and such, we're going to pray for you. No, you reach into that, the pot that you pass around the uh, collection plate and you take out $100 and give that widow a money for her to pay her electric bill if she's behind. 
she's been a member for 13, 14 years. My mom had told me this had happened to um, one of um, the members at a church. And we ain't going to say the pastor's name. Yeah, he told the member, we're going to pray for you. And turned around and kept talking to, to one of the deacons like nothing had happened. You can't misuse widows. You can't use the young people. There are people that are uh, sexually ass assaulting young people in the church. I did a documentary last year on uh, Disco Queen King, whatever you want to call her, um, Sylvester. And I'm sure everybody's heard of Sylvester. You know, do you want to ride? You know, he made a lot of hit songs. You know, you are my friend. He was a he was in, in a church when he was a kid. And he and they said that he said he had got molested by more than one person, more than one deacon in the church. They kind of passed him around. And this is all allegedly. I wasn't there. I don't know. But why would this man lie? But this happened. That's why everybody, you know. It's going to be held accountable for what they did. They better start repenting because God ain't playing with people. I always say God ain't winking. He, he said, told me that I never told you I was winking. But what I mean by that is that he's not just turning his head no more. God is sitting there saying, okay, we wrapping this thing up. And when they roll up the scroll and when they roll all the water and everything is rolled up, you're going to be sitting there before the Lord. And the videos that you see in the YouTube and the, the Facebook and all of that, those images are going to come up. Things that you said, things that you did that you thought nobody saw. And God is going to say, okay, now you my child of God, but why did you do this? And if you did do this, why didn't you repent? And you know the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is against one of the things we don't allow. Why did you do that? So I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to say that as people chosen of God, we've got to have the spirit of discernment. We've got to protect our young people. Just like we didn't know, they didn't come with instructions. Our young people don't know a lot of what's going on is as a result of sin, is a result of being miseducated. Um, I always say that I wish I had taught my sons to be a little bit more alert and I always say learn. This. I wish I had taught them the streets more, but I wasn't a street person. But I wish I had taught them to be a little bit more knowledgeable about the women that they find to love. That everybody that you pick out and say, oh, I'm in love with that person. They love me. It, it's not probably like that on the other end. I've been in a lot of little cute little love affairs where I was just in love with the person. They was like, okay, you know. So, but when we get to the part of a person casting spells, being a, having dark energy, they're a witch and they're throwing curses out here and then the curses are effective now. Don't think that these people are just talking. These people know what they're, what they're doing is, is really what they're doing. It's happening for real. So we've got to be aware and tell our young people to watch a person's footwork, not what come out of their mouth. My mom used to say everybody mouth, every mouth um, twists, every mouth, you know, splits. That was what she said. She said every mouth splits. I mean, anybody can lie at any given moment. Some people lie just to be lying. They don't even know why. You know, that's a whole nother demon, you know, but we've got to tell our young people, be careful who you take into your home, who you fall in love with and who you marry, because baby, you could be married to the enemy for real, for real. Um, so I just wanted to bring this to say, you know, are you a good witch? Are you a, and there's no such thing as a good witch. Are you a divine feminine or are you a bad witch with dark energy delving into the dark arts? Because we're in a season of where God is separating the wheats from the tares. But he said, he told us as chosen people, don't, don't try to pull up the wheats and tares. That's not for you to do because you may pull up a wheat with a tear. There are some people that are still on the fence, the remnants, they're kind of, 
They know that they were saved by God. They remember when they was in an accident and walked away and no scratches or nothing. They know that God has always been speaking to them, has always listened to them and saved them from out of uh, situations that would baffle the human mind. But they're kind of just sit on the fence. So that's why God said, don't pull up the weeks with the tears. You may pull up the wrong ones. It is for him to separate. He's going to do it in the end in God's judgment, which is coming soon. It's not. It may be a year from now, maybe six months from now, maybe two years from now. But it's coming so it's sooner than 1999. Remember, Prince wrote that song, I'm gonna party like it's 1999. Everybody thought in 2000 that the computers was gonna go out and it was the end of the world, it didn't happen then. Okay, that was 24 years ago, but that was 24 years ago. So, God's not gonna keep sitting back watching all these wars, watching people castrate and kill kids and babies and rituals for their recording contracts, or whatever business contracts, whatever. He's not going to keep sitting back watching that, watching people abuse people in the church, abuse young people. Uh, he's not going to keep sitting back watching them give us GMOs and, and PFOBs and letting the water go bad just to save a buck, to save for their insurance policy to leave to their kids and that their kids going to uh, use up their insurance policy in two years or whatever. He's not going to keep sitting back watching his chosen, his people be abused. So get right, learn, develop a spirit of discernment. You can sit in front of a person and listen to them, but you've got to have a spirit of discernment to know who that person worships, who, who do they belong to? Are they a child of God or they are a child of the enemy, the son of perdition? Are they here to destroy my life? Or are they here to help me on my spiritual journey? You know, I have a loved one and I'm going to stop right here because people have zero tolerance for long videos. I don't know why you could sit up and watch two hours of somebody defiling your screen, your home, defiling your kids and yourself, uh, Freddy Krueger and all of them and all these, you know, different movies where every word is the F word and the F bomb and and they sleeping with everybody and this one, that. You can sit up and watch two hours of that. But So you can watch 30 minutes of somebody trying to help you and your life to give you spiritual enlightenment. That's one of the reasons for Rise Women Network. I developed that name from uh, Maya Angelou's And Still Like Dust I Rise. And Still Like Dust I Rise. You may write me down in your history books with bitter, twisted lies, but baby, still like dust I rise, I rise, I rise. And she also said, like I repeat, people are trying to show you who they are. Believe them. Hello. Take off the rainbow colored glasses like I used to do, baby. Anytime a man told me something, I believe them. Anytime a person told me something, I believe them. You've got to develop a spirit of discernment because we live in the last evil days. You could lose your very life not having that spirit spirit of discernment, being able to discern what person is saying, not what they're saying, but what they're not saying, what's behind their words and what's behind their motivation. Are they here to help give you uh, life and energy and enlightenment or are they here to take your life? Because I have a loved one and I'm going to leave it like this. I have a loved one who is just rebounding from almost being taken out of this life and this is someone I gave life to. So I know about the bad witch and the dark energy. I know about that. I used everything that I could when this person came to live with me to show them the path of getting back to God, which a lot of times some of our, um, what do you call, what the trials that we go through in life sometimes, it's our own doing. Sometimes we walk away from God. Sometimes we turn our face from God. And he'd be like, okay, well, let me show you what it's like to turn your face from me. And then you fall in love with someone that is of dark energy. Or just because they want to get their way. This person told them they wanted him to be their godfather kids. So 
that means that my son buys the kids gifts and stuff like he's the godfather <laughs> people use these movies and they'll they'll try to um insult and your intelligence but when you have a, a innocent clean heart you're not looking at that my sons have clean hearts we all do but we've got to develop a spirit of discernment and we're from the line of judah and we've got to act like a lion in this jungle we've got to decipher if people are for us or for against us are you trying to help me or are you trying to take me out this is where we are in this dispensation so i'm gonna leave that here and you guys have a good day I'm going to say, even in the midst of my storm, I always saw God working it out for me because, baby, I was in a storm. Baby, I was part of that dark energy as far as I got wrapped up into it, as far as being one of the people that was trying to get my son away from it. So it almost took me along with him. So this is no joke. This I don't care about the eyebrow pencil and all the makeup. Half the videos I do, I'll be like, I'll put all that makeup on. You can't even really see me anyway. <laughs> and God says we're beautiful anyway without all of that. But even in the midst of my storm, I see God working it out for me. I see God working it out for you. Come on, chosen. Chosen. Roll call. Come forth. Boots on the ground, baby. We got to pray through, pray these people through, pray our loved ones through, pass this dark energy. And when I say, I mean, pray them past it, pray them out of that situation. If you're in a relationship or a marriage with someone and they have dark energy, you know they're a witch, you better make plans to get out, get out of there, get out of that situation. It's no joke. You will lose your very life. They'll be looking at your bitch and say, yo, he sure was a good person. And they're going about that. Another year or two, people will forget half the people that passed, even in their families. I mean, they remember them, but they go on with their life. You can look on TV and see people that lost loved ones, and they still playing their sports and music and everything else. Now, a lot of these artists have been taken out by their own management company, by their own producers. diddly do -di 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 and I'm going to leave that like that. We got people that sell their souls for a buck. And this young man was trying to get out of jail. He wanted to put up his house and his mother's house. Did, did what's his name? Oh, God, don't even want me to call his name. They wouldn't even accept $40 million. Or was it $50 million? No, nah, brother, you finna do your time. See, when, it's got, when God gets tired of people, he know what to do. You can cry all you want to, but when he's told you many times to walk away from sin, to turn from your wicked ways, and you don't do it, then you out of here, you know, and, and, and that's just the way it is. But I pray that everybody have a good day. I don't want to speak bad. I want to speak good, but you know what? We got to tell it like it is too, because God said, don't sugarcoat, because you're going to be judged for not telling people what you need to tell them. Because I don't, we don't want any lost souls, any of the remnants who want you to come forth, accept God back into your heart. Sure, I know bad things have happened. Things have happened. You've lost loved ones and you question God. Know that everything's happened for a reason. And with that, I'm going to go. And you guys enjoy your day. Be blessed. Be blessed. Jesus is on the main line, just tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line, tell him what you want, and you be blessed.